Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Gen AI Vlog. So in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about this fun personal experiment I have been conducting. It took me a while to figure this out. Uh, once I figure out uh, the code is actually not that hard, I took a bit of time to train this model. And in this episode, I just want to walk you guys through how I did that. Uh, so I dropped this post on LinkedIn. It's a fun personal experiment using completely public data set, right? Uh, and then I got uh, a quite a bit of feedback. I think uh, about 6,000, uh, over 6,000 impressions uh, in a span of two days. Uh, obviously appreciate everyone who show interest, appreciate everyone who reposted this, right? Uh, obviously, you know, for me personally, I'm in this field. Uh, I'm doing this experiment for fun uh, because I like this domain and I want to put more time in this domain and that's what we're doing here, right? To get things started, I want to start by saying that uh, all experiments are done on Hugging Face, model is pulled on Hugging Face, right? Complete open source. And then additionally, I'm using a personal run pod account, okay? So uh, it did cost money, right? Obviously not gonna lie about that. It does cost money. Uh, it's actually not that expensive. I'll explain that in just a sec, right? And then we're using NVIDIA GPU provided on one pod. So uh, that's pretty much how I did it, how I pulled this off. Uh, performance, uh, I'm using mean token accuracy. Uh, essentially, you're guessing the next token, you're guessing the next word, and the accuracy of that is 98%, which I thought is pretty good. So. Let's start from scratch, right? What is the data, right? Let's start with raw data. This is a link of raw data. Click on that. It will take you to shareholders letters. Uh, so this is the shareholders letters provided by BerkshireHathaway.com. Okay, so BerkshireHathaway.com slash letters slash letters dot HTML. Uh, so this is a public website, right? I'm not taking any private data set anywhere. I'm not disclosing any private secret anywhere, right? This is a complete public data set. Berkshire Hathaway poses letter. Uh, the domain here is investment, finance, fintech. That's the domain. And obviously, I respect Warren Buffett. I respect him as a person. I respect him as an investor. I think he's a subject matter expert in this domain, right? So I make the subjective choice here to go to this website. That's on me. Uh, if you don't like this, you can very well go to other website, right? There are many other investors write a bunch of letters online. If you can collect all those PDFs, you can do the same experiment as I did, right? Uh, in this episode, I'm going to respect this as the single source of truth, which means I'm pulling data from these PDFs, right? Now, I say PDFs. What I mean by that is these are links, right? You click on this, uh, it will give you a PDF, right? This is a PDF. So... Uh, it's a letter, right? It's a letter, meaning that it's a paragraph of sentences. So paragraphs of sentences means you can scrape it, right? PyMu PDF, Mistral OCR. Uh, well, Mistral OCR is uh, behind a paywall, but uh, PyMu PDF, uh, it's an open source package. Uh, so you can use those packages to scrape these texts, and then you can curate your own data set. Uh, so what I did is I scrape it. Obviously, you have to pick a chunk size that makes sense to you. Uh, the way I did it is basically by paragraph. Uh, each paragraph, I tell a large language model to give me a question that makes sense. That makes sense in the scope of this paragraph. Uh, so there's a question that this paragraph can answer. There's a question that this paragraph can answer, right? So that is how I curate the data. So that takes us to the second link, curated data. You open that, it will take you to this data set on Hugging Face. So uh, what are we talking about here, right? We have question answer. The question is based on the content. The content is answer. Answer is scraped from the PDF provided by Warren Buffett. And uh, on top of that, I have reasoning. Reasoning is basically another API call. Uh, you can think about it as API called DeepSeek R1. You can say, hey, look, I have a question. I have an answer. Can you provide me a reasoning how to go from question to answer? I right? just tell large language model that, and it will give you some sort of reasoning. Now, of course, you can tag it, you can do whatever you want. In this case, I didn't do much, right? I leave that to the developer, uh, whoever developer, whatever team you're working on, you do whatever you want, right? You tag it however you want. Uh, but this is column is here, the content is here, uh, that's the reasoning. So uh, I read a few, quite a bit of these. Uh, I think semantically, it does make sense. Uh, obviously, I'm not an investor like Warren Buffett, 
if some of you are in this field, in this domain, that you guys think of yourself as expert and you saw something that does not make sense, uh, please, of course, reach out to me, drop a message on LinkedIn, let me know. I'm more than happy to go through this data set and recurate this data for the public. Again, I think this is a good contribution to the community. I think this is a good contribution to finance, to the investment world. And I think this is just overall a good information to have from Warren Buffett and about Warren Buffett. So uh, let's leave that out there. And of course, uh, this is not perfect, right? Some of these are repetitive. Some of these are redundant. Uh, we can certainly have a different critique about this question, about this answer, about this reasoning, right? Uh, I'm not saying this is perfect. As you can see, there's a lot of letters. Uh, so obviously, uh, perhaps the code can be rewritten, the prompt can be rewritten uh, so that these questions can be more diverse. Uh, certainly, that's an argument, right? Uh, I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm saying this is a way to go, uh, certainly not the best way to go. Uh, so that's the curated data set. Uh, now you obviously pick a base model, right? I'm not going to train a model from scratch. I'm just going to pick a base model, for example, Llama 3.21 billion. That can be a base model. We can do Llama 3.23 billion, uh, 7 billion, things like that. You can go to Llama 4 if you want. You can go to DeepSeek if you want. Uh, they have code here. Uh, you can uh, refer to their reference code, come up with your own code, things like that. Uh, so in my approach, uh, it's going to be very similar to their code. Uh, obviously, uh, full credit goes to Onsloth, who provided this collab uh, collab notebook uh, they have code here right download the model uh, tokenizer uh, things like that uh, and then once you formatted it correctly uh, you can use sft trainer uh, and carry out your own training okay the only thing i did different than what's on here is i use deep speed so i can take the advantage of the multiple gpu run pod provide me and i can do this at much faster scale than what Onslaught Notebook is providing you. Onslaught Notebook is providing you here, it's depending on this connection, right? This connection here says T4, and what that means is a runtime type that is a T4 GPU. So uh, certainly, uh, you can do that. i give you one GPU that's already a pretty good start, uh, but the only thing I'm doing differently than what's happening here is I have four of these. That's the only thing that I'm doing that's different. So uh, with that being said, let me take you to the code. Uh, so this is the code I'm using. As you can see, I'm training a model right now. Literally right now, I'm training the model. This progress bar is going. Let me hide this. Uh, this is expected to take about uh, 17 hours, right? And then uh, I've only been running this for 11 minutes. Uh, so that's what this number means. As you can see here, uh, there's a quite a, a lot of uh, things to go, right? Uh, most of the progress bar has, haven't been finished yet. I've only been doing a little bit, 1% of the progress, right? So now let me take you to the code. So uh, this is wrong path. Uh, and then for full disclosure, that's my system. Uh, I have one instance here, one instance here. The image I'm using, it's this one, right? So this is a Docker image. For example, you can say Docker, uh, put that there. And then the first thing that pops out, that's a Docker image. Uh, so if you are doing this uh, in your company based on some sort of uh, organization rule or you're governed or dictated or constrained by some sort of organization rule, you know, no problem, right? You can take this image, uh, get it on your in situ instance or whatever instance you're using or, or Azure or AWS or whatever cloud platform that you're using, right? Uh, you can then reproduce what I'm doing, okay? Because everything I'm doing is relying on this, e this Docker image. So with that being said, that's a Docker image. Uh, everything is done in UV. So uh, you can do a UV tree. Uh, let me show you the package I've been using. Uh, so right off the box, you have Accelerate. Obviously, you install that. Uh, and then here we have Torch. Here I'm using Torch V2.7.0. Uh, and then I have bits and bytes uh, support the memory, right? If I want to drop the memory, I'm probably going to use 4-bit, 8-bit, things like that. Uh, data sets is just I want to grab data set from Hugging Face. And then on top of that, I have Deep Speed installed. Here I'm using 0.16.7. Um, additionally, I have transformers uh, 4.51.3. I actually had a couple of blockers when I'm trying to figure this out all the way in the beginning. Apparently, Deep Speed uh, relies on this version of Transformer. If you use a 4.5 or 4.49, something like that, this is probably not going to work. 
So if you're doing this experiment on AWS that has an old image, out of date image, uh, then obviously something like this is what you want to double check. Uh, on top of that, I have TRL that stands for Transformer Reinforcement Learning. It's a reinforcement learning package supported by Transformer. And then last but not least, I have Onsloth just because uh, they have models that I can download on Hugging Face that's much faster. That's pretty much the most of the package out there. A couple of other packages uh, is just um, dependencies. So uh, that's all the packages. And then let me show you uh, what files I have. The uh, first thing I have is the config file. So this config file is standard for deep speed, right? You have the batch size, gradient accumulation steps, uh, the floating point, uh, things like that, and then checkpoint. Checkpoint, I'm not doing too much here. I just set them all to false. The training batch size and the accumulation step for gradient, it's just auto. Uh, and then let me show you the other thing. Uh, the next thing that's important is grab the data set. And then here's the model I'm using. Previously, I fine-tuned Llama 3.2 1 billion instruct. In this experiment, I'm running 3 billion instruct. So upper tier size, right? The model is much larger and take up much more compute. Uh, that's really the difference. Everything else, training arguments, that's standard. Uh, the config path, that's standard. Getting there, that's for deep speed. And then uh, the rest of us is just history, right? SFT trainer, you just train it and then save it somewhere that you like. So I'm going to save this locally first. Uh, and then I have another script that pushed the code to Hugging Face. That's really all of it, right? That's really all of it. Uh, there's nothing special about this code. Uh, you can even probably ask ChatGPT to give you this code. And um, that's pretty much it. The rest of the step is just a matter of running this as I am right now, right? Uh, let me show you the wrong script. Uh, so I have a main.py here. Uh, that actually executed the deep speed using four GPU, right? The way I know is four GPU is because here I have four GPUs, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. And as you can see here, the GPU utilization is nearly all hundred percent. That makes sense because I'm using it right now, right? Uh, so that's how I control that. And then uh, last but not least, I can uh, look at the GPU while it's training, right? So watch uh, zero point one, Nvidia SMI. Uh, so what this means is I am watching this uh, GPU training and it's going to get updated every 0.1 second. Uh, so if I hit this, it's going to give me a small table. That's a table that tells me that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, all four GPUs and up and running. Uh, and then the utilization, it's all close to 100%, meaning that these four GPUs are spinning right now. Right, I'm using this right now. So uh, that makes sense because uh, here I'm training. Right. And I know I'm training it because I set up this code. And then all I did is uh, UV run main.py. So once you run uv.main.py, it's going to spin up the accelerator. It's going to find four GPUs, like what's happening here. It's going to get the four GPUs, set up the config, and then start training it. When you start training it, you see a couple of things. First of all, loss. So this is just the default cross entropy loss. I did not specify any special loss function. Uh, so we're going to start from there, 2.8. Uh, obviously, this number needs to go down, right? Uh, if the loss is not going down, then what is it that we're do even doing here? Right? Obviously, you want the loss to go down, as it is, right? 2.8, 1.7, 1.4, uh, all the way down to, I'm looking at 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Uh, so I would say that's training, right? We're indeed trying to upgrade all these weights, right? Things are being updated, weights are being updated, uh, and then things are looking good. Learning rate, I, I think I have a little bit of a descent here on the learning rate, not a whole lot, right? We're talking about 1.97, 1.96, so not a whole lot, just a little bit. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, and other than that, it's just a uh, mean token accuracy. So uh, this starts with 46%, not that accurate, right? If you have a dictionary of 10,000 words and you're only 46% accurate, that means the next word that you're guessing, it's all over the places, right? It's not that accurate. Uh, all the way down to maybe I'm seeing 76%, down here 77 I see a couple of 78%. Great, right? So we are indeed learning. That's a good thing, right? Accuracy going up, losses going down. Uh, that means we're making progress. We're going somewhere. So what I'm hoping is uh, after 17 hours, uh, this loss can probably drop down to 0 0.01. And then I'm hoping this accuracy to go up to maybe 90%, right? High 90%. Uh, so that means that at least, uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping uh, with that performance, I'm getting this document through this model, meaning that the model hopefully has already seen what's in this document, right? 
when I say document, I'm talking about the data that we curated before. So this question answer pair, right? However, we curated it here. Let's take a snapshot of that, right? At that point in the history, let's take a snapshot of this training data. Let's get this training data through the large language model. Let's make sure large language model can at least memorize all of these, right? So that's the idea here. Can you curate the training data from any unstructured PDF document and get a large language model to consume it? Uh, so that's the goal of this exercise. And I'm hoping I can achieve that. I already achieved that with 1 billion parameters. Uh, hopefully I can achieve that here again with a 3 billion parameter model. Uh, and I'm hoping that model can learn this more intuitively. Last but not least, uh, we're talking about epoch. Epoch is a little bit of a difficult calculation. Uh, it's actually, uh, you, you actually do a little bit of math between epoch and uh, the things in your config. Uh, so let me cancel this. Let me go to config again. So in, in this config, you have the batch size, right? And you have the cumulative, uh, and you have the gradient cumulative steps. Uh, so you want to take these two numbers, take the product, and you want to take the training sample size divided by this product. Uh, so whatever that is, uh, that's going to give you this ratio. Uh, so the epoch is going to start from not really one epoch because you're breaking it down to different batches, right? So uh, it's going to start from a fraction of an epoch, right? And obviously this number goes up, 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 all the way to hopefully closer to one. Uh, and then that will finish one epoch. That means that it's seeing all the batches in the data set. And then you will start from a second epoch. So uh, that's the math here. Uh, it looks a little weird, but I assure you it's not a mistake. Uh, it's because we are breaking things into batches here. And that's how that's calculated. So that's really it. Uh, obviously, I'm going to leave this on and running. And then once this finishes, I'm going to make another update on LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever and show you guys what the result is. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.